Hey, I'm Adam with Adam's Water. As you can see, Big Blue, the rig, is down at the moment still. I've figured out what the problem is, and I'll show you all that now. So I'm underneath the truck, and as you can see, this here is my fuel tank. It's the front tank, and right beside it is that selector valve. That is what the button on your dash that can change your fuel tanks if you got a multi-tank vehicle will actually change a solenoid in there from one side to the other, which changes your fuel tanks. So, this is the tank I'm using. So I track back up here. You can see there's two lines right there that come off the tank. If you follow them along the frame rail, you get to that spot right there. And you can see that chew mark in the side of the lines up there. I think that's where my air intrusion issue is coming from. It runs over to the selector valve here. And it's that one right there that's the source line. As you can see it's marked source. Which goes outflows along the frame rail towards the front of the vehicle. And then it goes up and over. Down there and then back up the other side to our lift pump. Now look at the front of the vehicle back. That there is the line coming from the fuel tank. It comes down and I've got clamped off and disconnected right there so I can run this test. But if you suspect that you've got bad fuel in your tanks or it could be the lift pump, one way to eliminate it is to just run a line like I've got here from the lift pump down to an inline filter and then run it down to a gas can or diesel can this is a diesel can here full of diesel for this truck so what i did next and i'm about to show you all now i can't show you the exact test because it kind of takes two people if you're going to be filming at the same time but i can explain the test to y'all and y'all can do it yourself Okay, I'm going to explain a little bit about the filter head of the truck before I show the test because it's integral to being able to do this test. Is you got the Schrader valve right here. The way you do this test, it is a pressure and volume uh, consistency test. Uh, what you do for it is you have to have one of these flow through fuel pressure gauges. Or you can, if you don't have a flow through like this one is here with this flow through valve, another method you could do is you could take just a fuel pressure reading gauge and put a T on it like this. And that way you can slide this over the Schrader valve and clamp it down to this little hose clamp. And the other side, we've got it blocked off with a uh, quarter inch extension for a ratchet. But if you could actually take and do this and then slide this out to do this, the uh, volume test. But the way you would do this is you would crank the truck up with, and you'd have it hooked up over the end of that. You'd slide it over there and clamp it down on it with the Schrader valve removed. You take, it's got a little valve down in there. You have to have a specialty wrench to take it out. But any auto parts place will sell that wrench. But what you do is you slide it over there, clamp it down with the valve out, and it allows fuel to flow through in this pressure gauge. Now, when you, you crank it up and everything, and while it's cranking, within three seconds of cranking, your fuel pressure gauge should read between four and six PSI. As you can see the gauge, you can barely read four PSI on the gauge. But as long as you have up to 4 PSI, you will be good for this diesel motor. Now, that's the uh, pressure test. Now what you got to do is test your volume. The way you test the volume would be, uh, an example on this one, you could either run that T-off line there into a cup and measure the amount this truck motor and all, I think, I'm not sure if it's all 6.9s and 7.3s or if it's just the 7.3s. But I know this one in particular is a 7.3 and it's supposed to have a third of a pint within 10 seconds of the motor running at idle. So you can either 
like I said, have one of these gauges and measure it that way. Or you could remove, like I've got here a tee off, you could remove that and put that end of the hose into a bottle and check the bottle that way. And that will tell you if you got the right volume of fuel. Now when I did this off the tanks, I'll show a picture now of how much fuel I got out of it. And I only had barely 4 PSI. And doing the same test with it running off the can, I got 6 PSI, which is the max you get off one of these mechanical pumps. And I got this much I'm going to show you in the picture now. So you might be asking yourself, what does this mean for the future of this rig? Well, this rig is going to be sidelined for a couple weeks while I get some money together to fix it. But my solution will be to take a large capacity fuel container, like off of like a semi truck or a big F450 or 550 that mounts to the outside of the frame. And I'll be installing one of those and a flatbed on this truck. That'll be coming up in a few weeks if you want to see it. Like this video, comment, subscribe, and click that little bell icon. So until next time, keep on welding, folks.